I've seen people with electric propulsion recharge their batteries with these little portable generators, the little Honda 2000s. I've seen that happen. Um, again, there's no perfect solution. I think we're all chasing something here and trying to get the most out of it, uh, which is the challenging part. Yeah, but let's talk about those portable generators. Oh, sure. Um, because none of those are marinized. Nope. They're typically speaking, uh, they're not grounded on the boat. Nope. Um, and they also, if they're gasoline generators, which they mostly are, they uh, produce a lot of carbon monoxide in the exhaust fumes. Um, so there's a number of reasons why uh, we shouldn't be doing that. And I know a lot of cruising sailors do, uh, but, but we really shouldn't be doing that because there are various safety issues associated with that. Um, so then, sorry, I got diverted there. The, the, uh, one of the more recent UL standards um, requires uh, gasoline generators to monitor their own carbon monoxide production. And if it goes above a certain level, it's required to shut the generator down. Uh, and I wish I could remember what that UL standard was. Uh, but that's one feature that people should be looking for if they do decide to, to buy a gasoline generator from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and stick it on the boat. Um, and I don't remember the what UL standard that is, the number on it. I, I'll, I'll add my own story. So I did uh, years ago uh, in 2009, bought my own little Honda generator. Uh, I'll tell you my story, which is going to be sort of what you talked about. Plugged it in uh, at anchor, generator output going aft, uh, swinging, uh, blowing about 10, 15 knots, close companionway door, close everything, uh, even have the uh, calling vents facing forward, not aft, leave the boat because the generator is so no noisy. It's crazy. The vibration is, it's, it's hard to ignore. Um, and within an hour, when we came back on board, the carbon monoxide detectors within the boat were beeping and the hatches were closed. There was no way mm -hmm. other than back pressure from simply the wind coming from the right. back, like a currents against a rock. And that was for me, uh, the last time that I've ever used a generator. Um, I did everything mm -hmm. I could to have the fumes vent aft. Uh, but realistically, uh, the back, uh, the eddy, like we see in rivers came back and pushed enough carbon monoxide, the detectors were on and they were on for a period of time until I got the forward hatches open, all the hatches open, companion window were open for all that carbon monoxide. And I have a detector that says the number of like parts per million or something. And it was not mm -hmm. like it was, yep. it was above the threshold. So yeah, my own version is tread carefully with a, <laughs> Uh, gasoline powered. And then the other challenge too is where do you store that gasoline? And I have seen too many boaters store gasoline containers in lockers that are not uh, vent proof. Uh, and they're storing gasoline on board inside the boat. E same thing with the Honda generator coming inside the boat, a gasoline mm -hmm. engine coming on board the boat in the cabin space. Uh, and if you forget to turn that vent cap over, your your life is you're going to you're going to go out with a bang. It's going to be spectacular on the way out. <laughs> it's the only way to describe it. So yeah, I go with Yeah, we actually if you think about it, uh, we've focused a lot on propane storage and we require a, a, a sealed tank and a locker which is vented overboard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's nothing in any of the standards that covers the storage of gasoline. I mean, there is for installed gasoline tanks, but there's nothing in the standards so, so far as I know that covers the storage of outboard motor tanks and, and carry on gasoline containers and so on. I always, on, on our boat with the outboard, I always store that uh, either in the anchor locker, which is sealed to the boat with a vent overboard, uh, but then it's in the bow of the boat where it gets a lot of pounding, or else uh, I, I have the uh, propane locker overbuilt to where I can, in size, where I can store it there. But that actually, I think, probably violates the, the details of the propane standard. It's been a while since I read that one. But at least it puts the gasoline in a similar place as the propane, where if it leaks, it's going to vent overboard rather than into the boat. Yeah, it's a big challenge. Storing gasoline on a boat that's diesel powered is a big challenge. And those generators go through quite a lot of fuel. Um, you know, you're going to need uh, more than just a little jerry can uh to you know fuel them up and fuel to keep them fueled up and also obviously limit limitation is also for the power output uh you don't get that much continuous ac power to run really really large uh dc battery chargers you just mm -hmm. don't 
so yeah, that's definitely a limitation. Anything else you want to add to that uh, on the topic of those little suitcase no, I think generators? That's good. All right, that's good. You know, I, 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 you know we shouldn't be too um, pessimistic about this. At the end of the day, it's remarkable how many, how few <laughs> catastrophes we have it with is. all of this his stuff. It's been uh, it's been a year since I've seen a boat go up in flames from a gasoline leak. Although the, the last one I saw was really dramatic, everybody had to jump overboard. But uh, it's uh, it's really uh, for for all the stupid things we do on our boats. Yeah, uh, it's remarkable how uh, rarely we destroy them. Yeah, I think so too. The way I describe it, I always think about you know the difference between having to do something and doing it for pleasure. That's where I draw the line. Like pleasure boating, I'm like, when you bring guests on board, they're assuming that pretty much everything on your boat is safe to code and that they're not putting their life in jeopardy when they come on board. So try to keep it that way so that everyone just assumes that everything is going to be benign and it's not going to be a crazy sort of event in their lives. Um, but you're right. It doesn't happen as often as we sort of fear, although one is always one too many. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.